We announced the class that there's now a more donuts just brought in. Oh, awesome. All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Young Marrieds. Glad to see everyone today. Got our 49er fan pastor picked on you in first service, huh? Yeah. Poor guy just come in wearing a scarf, just trying to keep his neck warm. <laughs> <laughs> he's, getting, he's getting picked on. Uh, so, uh, good morning and welcome. Uh, just a few quick announcements as we get started. Uh, I guess we've just received some more treats, so while we're doing announcements or messages, if you're not yeah, satisfied with what you took first, go back for more. And we'll speak on gluttony next week. Uh, so yeah, just start, we start there. Enjoy. Your, ruin your New Year's resolution right now in this class. Uh, so another special announcement for us is uh, if you've been in services, you've heard, or if you are a member, we hope you've got something in the mail you should have. We have a specially called business meeting happening next Sunday night, the 13th at 6 p.m. in the sanctuary, where we will be uh, asking the congregation for a vote on uh, receiving uh, basically uh, another church, uh, incorporating them into us to become a satellite location, and we are looking to become one church with two locations. Uh, and so uh, we're going to tell you more about that. If you would like to know more about it, you're not a member and have not received anything in the mail, feel free to come to the business meeting, um, and we'll ask you to sit on uh, the sides, and you can come and observe and, and enjoy and learn, and then we'd encourage you to Pursue membership. If you are a member, uh, please come because your vote is very important and we want to uh, hear from you uh, as part of the body of the church on what, how we're going to be doing uh, this in the future. Pastor preached a great message this morning uh, called uh, When Opportunity Knocks. And uh, specifically, we have some great opportunities coming our way uh, when it comes to this new church opportunity and several others in 2013. And so if you missed that message for any reason, uh, it'll be available on YouTube uh, tomorrow, and so uh, you can watch that. I really encourage you to do it uh, and uh, see what Pastor was talking about this morning. That would be that'd be very good. And then, of course, the story is back uh, full-fledged tonight, so if you're a story table leader, of course, we expect to see you there. And if you uh, would like to come check out the story, we're walking through Scripture together, uh, all of the Scriptures, actually. So um, we have from uh, actually now until June before the story concludes, and so we're going through scriptures. We are in um, the Old Testament right now, in uh, kind of the, the king's uh, era uh, of scripture, and so uh, we'll have some more uh, study and discussion on that tonight. We really encourage you guys to come. Uh, so let's uh, open in a word of prayer, and then we'll get started in continuing our series, The Five Ways I Say I Love You. I love you, and I love you. All right. Who do you point at? Lord, thanks for this day, our time together, and uh, we thank you for the truth uh, of your word and in your word. And Lord, today as we look at what you've written in scripture, we pray that you would illuminate uh, in our hearts uh, and minds what we need to know and, and how we need to apply it. Lord, let our marriages be strengthened, our families be strengthened, and today as we talk about a love that is one of belonging, uh, we would strengthen that belonging love in our relationships and our marriages specifically. Lord, we need you and we love you. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, so we are continuing in a series uh, called The Five Ways I Say I Love You or We Say I Love You. Uh, and just as a quick uh, recap for this, uh, we're looking at this word love because in English we have this one word, love. And this one word can mean uh, so many different things, right? We express it in different ways. We say, I love you in different ways. We say uh, that I love my wife, and then we say, I love my coffee, right? And so, so but those loves definitely mean something different, hopefully. Uh, and, and in doing so, we, we communicate different things by saying, I love you. Uh, so we're looking at five Greek words that would have been used. Uh, some of them were used specifically in the Bible, but all of them would have been used at the time the Bible was written in Greek, uh, New Testament times. Um, and these words really communicate well uh, some different aspects of love that are very important in our marriages, very important in our families. Uh, so love is a really important word, specifically in marriage. There's no substitute for it, right? Uh, you cannot replace it easily. Uh, we have explored for our first week uh, the Greek word epithumia, which is a strong desire. In scripture, this word uh, is often used to communicate uh, the, uh, another uh, word, lust. But it does not only have to mean lust, it can be a strong desire in a good way. So we talked about the strong desire a husband and wife should have for each other and how God set that up within us. Epithumia, a love where we desire specifically physically each other. Uh, we talked last week uh, about the word eros, and this is a romantic and yearning love. 
Uh, and so uh, Pastor George and Nadine talked about eros, the romantic love, where we yearn for each other, where we want to romance each other, and how that's a, a necessary ingredient to bake the cake of marriage, if you will. Uh, and then this week we're going to explore what it means to say I love you, translated as a strong affection and belonging. And each week we go through, we want to remind you that we're looking at these, uh, at these five words, and there is an interesting progression to pay attention to, uh, that the, the kinds of love we're talking about start with, we've started with a uh, kind of love, epithumia, that is very physical. Uh, and as we work our way uh, up towards agape love, which is the way that Christ loved the church and loves us, uh, then we are moving from a kind of physical love, and, and as we progress, we move closer towards an emotional and then a spiritual love. It's not that any one of these is necessarily more important than the other. They're all needed uh, in balance uh, in our lives and our marriages. Uh, but we're moving, as we move closer to Christ as a mature believer, as a Christ follower, we also uh, mature closer to how He loves. And that should be our goal. And so that's why we're taking you down the progression in the way that we are. So let's take a look uh, at what we're going to call storge love this week. Uh, this Greek word, storge, basically means affection uh, and belonging. All right? Uh, so uh, I saw some of the ladies smiling extra special at this picture. Because babies just, they do it for you, don't they? You know, like you see a little baby foot, you're like, ah. Oh. I love babies. Um, so uh, this love is comprised of natural affection and a sense of belonging to each other. In scripture, uh, this is the kind of love shared by parents, brothers, sisters. Uh, storge love in marriage meets the need that we all have to belong. Uh, it is how we create that kind of home atmosphere where you just show up and you are loved. Where you walk in the front door and you didn't do anything to earn it that day, per se, uh, you are just loved because you belong. You are family. This could be between a husband and wife. It could be between a father and son or mother and daughter or, you know, any combination thereof. Um, you just give and receive love because you are family. And when we put it that way, often we understand what we're trying to say. Hey, it's family, right? We, we have sayings like, blood runs thicker than water. Um, because there's this element of loyalty and belonging uh, when we have a family love for each other. I know that not all families are like this, and so we do run the risk when communicating family love that some of you would negatively associate um, that, that emotion or negatively associate an action of love uh, with maybe something that happened in your family. Um, and so it is not, are not our goal to bring that up uh, so much as it is our goal to teach about what a healthy belonging love is like and what a healthy family can be. And regardless of what your past was, or even what you're currently facing, um, it is your responsibility as husband and wife to create a family now that is a godly one. And foster an environment now where you have belonging. And, and so, it didn't have to be great in the past, hopefully it was, but... If you look at it, you say, I don't know that I agree, family love, I'm not sure, we I've never had great family love. Now's your chance to make great family love and belonging. You get to set those rules in your household. Joshua said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And so you get to have that kind of say. You get to make that kind of choice. And as the new year begins, um, it is a great time to say, this year, I'm going to create and foster and harbor uh, a great family love. And that's really what store day love uh, is all about. Uh, and so, uh, let's look together. Uh, before we jump into some more scripture here, I want to give you guys a chance for some uh, table discussion, like our little faceless beings here. Um, so, this, around your tables, these two questions, uh, spend some time, and then we'll come back and, and share some of those things. The first is, what is so special about belonging, and why is it needed? Right? So, why, why do we need to belong? What, do you, what is the basic human nature to belonging? You know, and maybe explore that around the table. Um, and then, what kinds of things does your spouse do to make you feel like you belong with them? All right? So this would be a chance to brag on your spouse um, and uh, not to tell your spouse how you want them to behave to make you feel like you belong. But really to say, here's some things that my wife or my husband have done that really make me feel like I belong. All right? So spend about uh, five minutes around tables. We'll come back and we'll share a few of those uh, Wonderful answers. <laughs> 